Welcome back, everyone. A timely new film is examining white privilege, unconscious bias, and anti-Asian racism. In Stealing School, a student called April Chen is accused of plagiarism by a relentless teaching assistant and must fight to prove her innocence. Take a look. Ms. Chen? What exactly are you getting out of all this? I'm upholding the integrity of this school. What are you getting out of this? I'm not gonna let you call me a cheater and get away with it. Do you understand? Ms. Chen. Oh, sorry? Director Lee Dong and actors Jonathan Kaltz and Mfo Kwaho join us now. Welcome everyone. Hey, how are you? Hello. Hello. Thanks for being here. So the the racism issues that are explored in this film are subtle. They're not overt. They're not the the images that we typically see that we're perhaps much more used to. Uh, Lee, let's start with you. Why did you want to address the issue in this particular way? Um, I think I've just dealt with similar issues growing up my entire life, especially doing most of my education in the East Coast, which is generally very white. Although I love my time in university and law school, I did experience, as you say, these sort of more subtle forms of racism towards uh, Asians, such as us. And so I wanted to explore it in a way that was um, both pertinent to the way that I was educated, but also in a way that was kind of funny and uh, interesting, I suppose. So you mentioned going to university um, in the Maritimes. You went to Dalhousie, and that's sort of when the concept of this, of this film started taking place in your mind, um, because you wanted to, I guess, examine what it's like to be a racialized person in a university in Canada. Is that right? I also want to show what it was like to be the only Asian sort of in a university, which is kind of what I was during most of my time out there in Halifax. Not that it was a bad thing, but it was alienating at times, especially when it came to issues of race. Um, Enfo, I want to ask you about microaggressions because um, with the prefix, it makes it sound like it's small, but let's talk about how damaging they actually can be by comparison to perhaps more overt or explicit racism. Microaggressions are a lot of what I would experience in Canada as opposed to the time that I spend in the States and the racism I would experience there. So you could call microaggressions, you know, very uh, inherent version of Canadian racism, so to speak. Um, microaggressions are, are something that I experience on a daily basis. It's either I see them or I don't notice them. At the end of the day, I may remember a microaggression I experienced and then I can put the pieces together and go, oh my goodness, that's what that was. That was somebody being racist and just not being able to overtly say it to me. And when you're not able to deal with microaggressions in terms of discussing them with someone in a therapeutic way or to find catharsis, it can mess with people if they're not addressed, if they're not discussed if you don't face these things. And they happen every day. So in um, the making of this film and now the fact that we are in the midst of these anti-racism protests, and not just here, in fact, right around the world, um, Jonathan, what personal lessons have you learned throughout this entire journey? Uh, well, I think that it's really important that, you know, that we need to do as much learning and unlearning as possible. And, you know, unlearning the things that we, we don't even realize that we've learned through osmosis about how the society is operating. And I think that for me, something that was a very naive belief that I had that, you know, I, I realized was incorrect was I... I I always sort of imagined and thought that white supremacists were trying to bring us back to the society that they believe in, you know, that it was about bringing us back to something that we've evolved beyond. And, you know, through the, the everything that's been happening and, and the work that I've been doing, I've realized that, no, they're trying to uphold the current society. This is a white supremacist society that benefits one group more than the rest, and it marginalizes those other groups for the profit of that one. And I think that, you know, the, the, the crux of that realization is that there's work to do, you know? And I think that I, you know, I thought of myself as an ally before. I thought of myself as somebody who was supporting, you know, the BIPOC people in my life and around the world, but it's embarrassing what I called allyship before. And so I'm trying to be as active as I can and now trying to dismantle these systems of white supremacy that are in Hollywood and in our industry in our social interactions and, you know, our communities. 
Well, let's talk about Jonathan. Let's talk about white privilege um, and how nuanced it can be and how those who practice it can be often be oblivious to it. Do you think your character was aware of his white privilege? I, I think he's completely oblivious to it. And hopefully, you know, through this process, he's become more aware of it. And, you know, he, he can be an agent for change at that institution versus the epitome of the problem. Lee, the movie is coming out in the middle of this pandemic. And, um, you know, the question is supposed to be, how have you seen COVID-19 impact anti-Asian racism specifically? But I, I think for most people, they would agree that's a foregone conclusion. It is happening. So to what extent have you seen the anti-Asian racism um, interact with this pandemic? Um, well, on a macro scale, there's been some media coverage of anecdotal racial uh, racist incidents in the world and in Canada. And um, statistically, I believe there was a poll released recently that suggested that many Asian Canadians are feeling like they are uh, experiencing an increase in sort of racial comments and whatnot. I know myself personally have had some uh, uh, less than friendly encounters at the grocery store. Um, it's something that is certainly that has certainly been spurred on by COVID-19. And, you know, people are people are stressed, people are out of work. I don't know if these people's family members are ill. I don't know if they know where their next meal is gonna come from. I understand that people are very um, emotionally tense right now. I wish they didn't take it out on Asian people, um, but it's something that's happening right now. And I think that pointing out that it is real, is here in Canada, uh, is the first step to people starting to correct look, examine themselves and correct the behavior here at home. And MFO, um, we're in a pandemic, but we're also in the middle of a uh, racial reckoning, an awakening, um, as some people are calling it. What are you hoping that viewers of the film are going to take away when it comes to uh, race and privilege after they view this? You know, we, we are definitely in a reckoning right now. And, and it's unfortunate that the shift in our consciousness has to occur at, at the hands of the death of these black people. I want people to realize how much they have to unlearn in terms of what they're used to in, in conducting themselves, uh, supporting racialized communities, because clearly not enough is being done and not enough has been done. So people have to unlearn so much of what they're used to doing and, and look in the mirror as well. I, I also think that in many industries, if, if not all industries, but specifically Hollywood, here we are promoting a movie. I think at the top of these companies, you know, the higher ups, People, people from racialized communities need to be hired in the higher up positions in Hollywood studios. Black people, indigenous people, Latino people, Asian, South Asian people. So they can hire people that look like them to properly tell stories about them. Very powerful words indeed. Well, Enfo and Lee and Jonathan, um, thank you so much for joining us today um, and for sharing your perspectives on this film. We really, really appreciate it. Thank, thank you, so you for, having, for us. having us. Thank you so much. Much love to you. Thank you. Thank you. And we want to let everybody know where they can watch it. It is called Stealing School. The film is available on Vimeo, on demand, and iTunes right now. Please, please go out and watch it. We'll be right back right after this. <laughs>